Hello everyone, thank you for checking out my YouTube channel today, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. I am your host, as always, Nick Barksdale, and today we are joined by a very special guest for a series on race and ethnicity in the ancient world. Dr. Rebecca Futo Kennedy, thank you so much for coming on today. Happy to be here. We've covered Black Athena, the controversy, both sides of the arguments, and how really both sides of the arguments have stood the test of time or haven't in their own way. And so now we're going to go to this one, Dr. Kyle Lincoln, who many of you are going to be familiar with our episodes on medieval Liberia, asked if you would explain the Mary Beard controversy and the misunderstanding of the interconnectedness of the Roman world. Yeah, so, so this one was in 2017, 2018, 2017, I think. Okay, it's actually the reason why I started my blog back up after having not written on my blog for like three years or something. Um, which was that, uh, so what happened was, is that the BBC sort of education wing put out a cartoon that uh, about, you know, sort of life in Roman Britain. And um, the, the family that was the centerpiece was a, a centurion who was uh, dark skinned. And um, people got very upset, British nationalists, particularly, and sort of sort of white supremacist groups got very upset about how saying how the um, BBC no longer cares about historical accuracy. And so first, uh, a different historian, not Mary Beard, a lesser known sort of male historian came out and, and did a Twitter thread where it was like, dude, we know that the Syrian legions and the Iraq legions were stationed up in Roman Britain. We know from tomb information that there was a, um, one of the sort of, I can't remember his exact position, but he is um, North African Berber and potentially um, we have his tomb, etc. We know that there were, you know, non-whites in Roman Britain because the Roman Romans learned something very quickly when they were setting up uh, legions in Germany, which was you don't put indigenous legions in the same region because that gives access points for um, undermining Roman authority. And so they had a practice of stationing people from different regions of the empire in different spaces. So we know who was in, um, you know, we know historical. So that had already been put out and seemed to be fine. Mary Beard, um, on Twitter, as you know, she sort of has a huge Twitter presence, um, put out her own opinion on this in defense of the BBC, um, saying, again, some of the same, same information and basically sort of saying that, look, you know, we know <laughs> how the Romans operated their military operation and we know how much migration and movement and mobility there was within the Roman Empire. And we know for a fact that Romans, you could be a Roman and not be a white person. You can be a Roman and not be Italian, <laughs> right? Um, we know this because Romans of all, on three continents had Roman citizenship. And Roman identity isn't, after the first century BC, pretty much you cannot call someone Roman and restrict it to just someone who is from the Italian peninsula. And even if you are just restricting Romans, starting in the first century BC afterwards, who are from the Italian peninsula, that doesn't make any sense because the Romans of the Italian peninsula are made up of lots of different groups, including Greeks and Etruscans and um, the Latins themselves who weren't considered Romans. Um, obviously Sicily was not, which, which Sicily, Sardinia and Corsica, which they took from the Carthaginians, were not Italian Roman spaces. These were Greek and Punic and they had black Africans um, all over the place on these islands. Uh, so we know that you can't say Roman and mean white person. I'll get into on another episode of this, um, what you actually, how, how whiteness in fact is not a thing that you can talk about at all when you talk about Greeks and Romans in antiquity, but you can actually if you're talking about like Germans, um, but that's different. Um, and so, so the controversy then exploded because Mary Beard is such a lightning rod on Twitter for trolls where they just started coming after her and then Importantly, Nicholas Talib got involved. <laughs> and I don't know if you know who Talib is, but he wrote, he has game theory. Um, he is not a historian, um, and his history is, in fact, really super bad and actually um, anti black and fairly strongly racist. Um, but he is a game theory guy. And he got involved in the debate and went after Mary. And Mary made a comment about how, look, I've read your, you know, your pop book on game theory, but I don't know how much you know about Roman history. And he got offended that she called it a pop book. 
but Mary writes popular books too. So like, what does she care? She didn't think, she was just showing him that she knew some of his work, but didn't have any idea. Well, then he pulls out a genetics study done by the Wellcome Trust and some others where that suggests that there was in part of uh, ancient Britain, um, it, it, it uses a modern population to argue that there is was no um, cultural or uh, ethnic diversity in Roman Britain. Um, when in fact, that's not what it shows at all. And it, it actually shows a fundamental, mis fundamental misunderstanding about how genes manifest. And actually, all it shows us is that if you decide that hair, nose, and skin color are your indicators for continental or racial categories, that you can always find what you want to find in the DNA evidence. You can't say that those things that as they manifest in DNA are actually representative of someone in antiquities actual background, a continental geographic or origination. We can talk about ancient DNA and the problems with ancient DNA studies like, at another time. It's a huge problem. <laughs> and it factors into all these things because when you're having an argument with a white supremacist online, they're always going to throw out genetic studies, which Talib does. And so his, he basically then said that, Molly, uh, that Mary was a fool and didn't know what she was talking about and sort of sanctioned open attacks on her. She's not wrong, though, because as I already mentioned, the, to be a Roman wasn't actually to be Italian um, to begin with. And it wasn't in any um, stretch of the imagination to mean to be white or to be of Northern European descent. But if you already have invested in this idea that all great civilizations in antiquity are products of the Nordic invasion, um, this sort of this racial theory of Nordicness, then none of that matters to you, right? But, but we know that there are Romans all over uh, three continents and that they came in all different skin colors, all different languages. Your language didn't define who you were. Latin is not the official language of most of the empire um, or the commonly spoken or first language of, of most people in the Roman Empire. And of course, as you mentioned uh, in our conversations earlier, and as a reminder for everyone that, you know, in the second, in, in sort of by the third century, all free people in the empire were given citizenship. They're all Romans. And again, we can talk on another conversation about identity and how that functions because being Roman doesn't preclude also being Syrian or Algerian or Greek or anything else. Uh, That's just not how it works. So that controversy um, was really about the attempts of people who are sort of more British nationalist types to take a modern identity that they had and impose it back onto the ancient Roman Britain because they want to use the Roman roots of, of Britain as a way to bolster their own unique culture. But of course, Roman Britain is hardly different than French Britain, you know, the, the Roman Gaul or Roman Germany or other places that the Romans conquered. So it's very complicated, but it really just is, again, I think the whole thing boils down to modern identities being imposed on antiquities and this claim for a whiteness of the ancient world that is completely um, not supported by any of our ancient evidence. And poor Mary just got herself in the middle of it and <laughs> got attacked uh, by it. But it also goes to show how modern identities, like Talib's own identity, is tied up into, and we I know we're going to talk about this on another episode, it's tied into separating North Africa from South Africa, or, or what, what people refer to as Sub-Saharan Africa, which is not a biological or a cultural dividing line. It is a modern racial dividing line. I really can't wait for that episode. I'm just gonna <laughs> yeah, well, we can have fun with that one. Um, but they, uh, but I think one of the things that's really important to to note is that these historical controversies are all tied up in and um, looking through the questions that you sent me. I can see the manifestations of them in the way that people ask their questions and the way they frame the questions. So you can actually pinpoint what they're reading, who they're getting their information from, and how badly, I guess I will say historians, professional historians and classicists and archaeologists over the course of the last five decades have done at basically getting people to see the real evidence that's there instead of the ubiquity of these late 19th century, early 20th century sources that are out there on the internet and open access because they're out of copyright um, and that are really specifically bound to these political ideologies of fascism um, and white supremacism and, and lost cause um, narratives in the United States. I think it's a really important, make sure that that one is there because that's a big driver of the, there are no black Africans in the ancient world. 
um, narratives. So 